Welcome to this new course, Patient Interactions and History Taking. This module will help you to gain knowledge which will improve your interactions and communication skills with your patients. At the end of this module, you will be able to describe the role of the radiologic technologist in taking patient clinical histories, explain why patient interaction is important to patients as well as their family and friends, and explain appropriate interaction techniques for various types of patients. This chapter is divided into two main sections. In the first section, we will demonstrate the important role the technologist plays in communicating with the patient before, during, and after the examination. We will also explain the different types of communication and types of touch and learn the types of questions to avoid and those to ask when collecting data and gathering the clinical history from each patient. One of the immediate benefits of communication lies in its ability to relax the patient. The technologist can also use communication to educate the patient and help dispel fears or misconceptions about radiation or the imaging process. A secondary benefit of communication is that the patient will see you as competent. You will meet the patient's needs, whether practical or personal. The practical needs entails imaging study. The personal needs entails education, respect, and a timely study. The technologist must help the patient feel good about themselves while enhancing the patient's self-esteem without embarrassing or confusing them. Instead, the technologist should offer reassurance and encouragement and treat the patient fairly and respectfully. There are four communication skills and they are all interwoven. The four are thinking, listening, speaking, and of course, nonverbal. Listen to the patient and respond with empathy. The technologist should be a good listener and should not intimidate the patient. Take accurate notes and record them appropriately. The technologist should get answers to key clinical questions. Patients need to feel that they are important and that the information that they are providing is important. Acknowledge the patient's anger if present. The technologist should also respect the patient, be genuine, and should empathize but not sympathize with the patient's condition. The technologist will need to develop good communication skills and maintain a polite and professional demeanor. Verbal communication can include spoken words, written words, voice intonation, slang, jargon, and the organization of sentences. Humor is a communication tool, but should be used with caution by non-relatives, especially in the hospital or the medical environment. Nonverbal communication includes body language, touch, paralanguage, professional appearance, 
physical presence, visual contact, and personal hygiene. Paralanguage is the cadence of language and includes tone, pitch, pauses, stress, speed rate, volume accent, and the quality of our voice. Body language can include eye contact, facial expression, and movement of the extremities. The technologist should try to show interest in the patient's answers. By maintaining eye contact, the technologist will ensure that questions, instructions, and other information are understood. The expression of the technologist and any body movements should not confuse the patient. For example, answering yes with a head shake or folding arms that indicate an unwillingness to help. Appearance should be professional at all times. Professional appearance means that clothing should be neat and tidy. Physical hygiene should emphasize grooming. This includes keeping hair and nails clean, avoiding bad breath, and minimizing body odors that are induced by cigarettes or heavy perfumes. Perfumes should be avoided because patients may have allergies. Before touching the patient, the technologist should request permission. The three types of touch are touch for emphasis, touch for emotional support, and touch for positioning and palpation. Touch for emphasis could involve moving the body part into a specific position. Touch for emotional support could be patting a baby on the head. And positioning and palpation touch is absolutely necessary in imaging. This could involve checking for bony landmarks. In searching for bony landmarks, the technologist will palpate the patient's body. Proper palpation is achieved by using the pads of one or two fingertips to localize the correct body part. The technologist should never use several fingers or the entire palm during palpation. Also, the technologist should never poke the patient with the tip of a finger. Radiologists may not have the opportunity to obtain a clinical history from the patient. It is therefore the technologist's responsibility to get a specific, accurate, and detailed clinical history. The technologist should show a genuine interest in what the patient has to say and project professional competence and a sense of caring. Patients need to feel that the information they are providing is important. The technologist must also demonstrate accurate note-taking skills. Patient history must match the information and conditions reported on the requisition. The symptoms should also support the requested examination. The technologist should always verify the patient's information before the start of the examination. Most patients understand the importance of clinical history and will provide information as requested. Never disregard anything the patient says, 
even if it does not fit with the patient's symptoms. Avoid leading direct questions such as, is the pain in your hand? A better question is, where is the pain? Listen instead of asking questions. Often, the patient will tell their story after a simple, what happened? The response from the patient will help the technologist determine the patient's life experience and educational background, which can help the technologist decide on how much medical terminology or technical terms to use when communicating with the patient. Use precise and clear words while keeping in mind that sometimes words will not have the same meaning to non-medical personnel. Use open-ended questions that do not direct the patient's answers. They are non-directed and non-leading. Facilitation, such as nodding or saying yes or okay, can encourage elaboration. Silence can be used to give the patient time to remember and helps with accurate recall. Probing questions allows the technologist to get more clinical details. Repeating or rephrasing the question can be used to clarify information or to verify that the patient has not changed their story. And finally, summarization can be used to verify the accuracy of the information that is given. Objective data can be measured. This data can be seen, heard, or felt. Fever, temperature, or a lump are examples of objective data. Subjective data are things that are perceived by the affected individual only, such as pain and feelings such as sadness, for example. Regardless of the data, the technologist should never disregard the information given by the patient. There are a number of basic elements of clinical history. These include the chief complaint, localization and chronology, quality, severity and onset, aggravating or alleviating factors, and associated manifestations. The chief complaint will be the main problem that the patient presents. The radiologist must know the chief complaint, but the technologist should not ignore other complaints from the patient. The technologist will need to listen and document any other problems or complaints by the patient. By ignoring all symptoms except the most predominant, the technologist can miss important clinical information. The technologist can have the patient point and identify the exact area of concern. This is localization. Chronology refers to the time element of the symptom. Chronology would include the duration since onset, the frequency or how often the problem is occurring. The time element would indicate when the symptoms were worse, whether they occurred during the day versus at night. And when documenting the chronology of symptoms, avoid giving dates or days. Instead, state the time frame, for example, 
two weeks or three days. Quality can be used to describe the symptoms that the patient presents. For example, localized versus general pain. Quality could also describe the frequency of pain, such as throbbing, dull, burning, radiating, or crushing. Duration describes the period since the outbreak of the symptoms. Severity describes the amount, intensity, or extent of the complaint. For example, a burn or the number of fractures. Onset describes when the complaint started and could help to determine the cause. For example, eating peanuts that caused a rash or hives. Other questions could focus on when the complaint started or whether the complaint is an old or new symptom. An acute symptom means something with a sudden onset, while a chronic symptom would be something that has been there for a while, typically over six months. Aggravating or alleviating factors describes what intensifies or alleviates the symptoms. For example, the patient may get heartburn only after eating spicy foods. Spicy foods would therefore be an aggravating factor. If drinking milk helps to relieve the pain of a stomach ulcer, then milk would be an alleviating factor. Associated manifestations would include any symptom associated with the chief complaint. For example, the patient's arthritis that could lead to joint stiffness. The technologist should be careful not to convey personal opinions. The symptoms may be related to the chief complaint or it could be a separate complaint. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.